Good. How's it going? Good. Hello, it's Jeff Weiner. Hey, Jeff. Hi. How's everything? Okay, how you doing? Okay. I think it started off as a circle and became a heart. We'll just wait a couple of seconds, see if anybody else joins. <clears throat> We did get one more person. All right, Steph, you want to start? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I think that uh, we'll call the meeting to order. I think we are spoiled from the last few meetings where we had a much bigger crowd, but the weather is pretty nice today, so. <laughs> Maybe that accounts for a slightly lower attendance, but um, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining tonight. Uh, first on the agenda is um, a review of the meeting minutes from our last meeting on April 20th. Uh, Mr. Bertola, if you wouldn't mind scrolling down, um, the meeting minutes are on the back of the agenda. And just when everybody gets a chance, if they could just put their name in the chat so we can take mm -hmm. attendance. Yeah, good reminder. Just 
we have a motion to accept the, min uh, the minutes? Right. Second. Okay. All right. We got it. Yep. We're good. Okay, good. Okay, great. So I think um, at the top of the agenda, we'll hand it over to Mr. Bertolo for our principal's update. Oh, you're mute. <laughs> for some reason on the shared screen, I have two devices up. It won't let me mute the one that I'm sharing the screen. So I wasn't sure if, if you could hear me on that one or not. I didn't want the backlash of two competing devices next to each other. That would not be fun. So I'm glad you guys can hear me. Um, first off, I just want to start by, um, by thanking the HSA for the teacher appreciation breakfast that we had uh, during teacher appreciation week. Um, they were definitely spoiled, so I know that they enjoyed it and hopefully a lot of them reached out to you guys individually to, to thank you as well. Um, in terms of student of the month, since I've been announcing them every month, um, why stop now? Our May students of the month for sixth grade were Malia Yidan, Seventh grade was Louis DaCosta, and eighth grade, Annabella Grosso. Um, and we did pick our winners for June, um, but I'll announce that at our, at our next meeting. Um, the last chunk is really just talking about end of the year stuff. Um, I don't know how much, I don't know if this is like breaking news or if it made it out yet, um, but there is new legislation coming out or some kind of like guidance update about outdoor social distancing. So apparently um, Dr. Heinig is trying to get confirmation on what that specifically means, but supposedly there's gonna be new guidance coming out for graduation ceremonies that spectators do not need to social, social distance any longer, which makes the promotion ceremony a lot easier because we don't have to worry about um, like limiting attendance and capacity and all that stuff since it's going to be outdoors. Um, so hopefully that'll be coming out any day now, but that's, that was information that we were given as an extremely strong possibility that's going to get announced any minute, I think, <laughs> which is big for the high school too, because obviously that'll, that'll impact the high school graduation too in a positive way. Um, we are still scheduled for June 23rd at 12 o'clock. Uh, the pool party is still scheduled for June 24th. Uh, we are looking to do a school-wide field day on June 24th, which again, if they are removing outdoor um, social distancing restrictions and things, things like that, um, it also makes a field day that much easier because then we don't necessarily have to worry about trying to do outdoor activities within you know, certain restraints. Um, the other positive is it's the last day of school and it's after the graduate or the after the promotion ceremony. So we don't have to worry about anyone, you know, God forbid anything happened. Um, we don't have to worry about quarantining or anything that would impact any type of um, like our activities. Um, let's see what else for 100 percent remote students. Um, we are hoping that they're going to be able to attend the field day. We don't want to leave anybody out. And again, since it's the last day of school, if they do want to come back, we obviously, you know, we want everybody to be a part of this. We want this to be a nice send off for the eighth grade, but also um, like have it just be a nice end of the school year thing to do. Um, also for 100% remote students, we're looking to do a return of materials right before the end of the school year, probably around June 17th and 18th, but there'll be information coming out by the end of the week with a whole you know, all these dates listed. Um, and also, I know there's not a big attendance here, but for anyone that borrowed a Chromebook from the district, um, we are gonna be asking that they get returned right at the end of the school year, either June 24th, if they're an in-person person, or June 25th, if they're a remote child. Um, but again, all this information will be coming out in an email. So if, you know, if you miss any of the dates, everything will be very clearly outlined in, um, in the email at the end of the week. The other thing, because of eighth grade promotion being on June 23rd and it being in the afternoon, 
I did get approval for June 23rd to be a 100% remote day for the entire school. That way the eighth graders don't have to worry about coming to school for any period of time. Um, you know, from what I've heard, the eighth graders like to get um, groomed for the event, I guess is the, the correct word. Hair done and nails and makeup and all that stuff. So I'm trying to give everybody, you know, as much opportunity to do that as possible. Um, and also we were trying to figure out how do we get the sixth and seventh grade teachers to the promotion if they're in school teaching till 1230. So um, thankfully, Dr. Heinig was on board and was agreeing that June 23rd will be a remote day. And again, that's all going to be outlined um, in the communication that comes out on Thursday. Mr. Bertolo, when you say remote, do you mean asynchronous? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, what else? I don't know if this is on the agenda for later or if it's something we could just start thinking about, but for those of you that'll still be here next year, um, I did have to submit to Dr. Heinig a list of um, proposed fundraisers and things that we're thinking about doing for next year, but also all the administrators have a, an HSA, um, I guess, district-wide calendar that we're adding our fundraising dates to. So if we do have at least general ideas of when some of these events take place, it would probably be good to get them on the calendar sooner rather than later. And some of the things I mentioned in my email to him was mom's night, if we're looking to get that started again next year, the Scholastic Book Fair, and March Madness, if, if that does come back for, you know, next, next spring, I guess it would be. Um, other than that, I think that's, I think that's all my notes. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's good. Thanks for the update. I think um, to move into the president's update, um, just to kind of follow up on um, Mr. Bertolo on mention of the teacher appreciation breakfast. Um, so that was on May, for Friday, May 7th. Um, and yes, we did receive a ton of thank yous um, from staff and teachers. Um, yes, it was really, it was amazing. It was for, for like a week after the teacher I know, breakfast. it really was so yeah, nice. Yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> really really nice um so we're happy that we were that the hsa was able to do that for the teachers um one of the things we have on the agenda tonight though is just to mention that we had an executive board vote on april 30th um via email um because we had to move some money um, from the miscellaneous and sunshine uh, sun, sunshine budgets to supplement um, we had some remaining budget and teacher appreciation that was left over from the welcome back teacher breakfast that we did in september um, so we had to move some money around, and I know we wanted to um, record and document that in the meeting minutes uh, for tonight's meeting. So I'm sure Jeffrey can point that out when he gets to uh, the treasurer's update. But I just wanted to make mention that uh, mention of that to everyone since that came up after our last meeting. Um, and then I think Kristen, I think I saw you on. Um, if you want to shout out uh, the Panera fundraiser that's coming up. Yes, hi, we do have uh, Panera tomorrow night from four to eight. And then I also um, shot Meredith a message today that we are doing um, pliables on June 19th. Yay. That's amazing, Chris. Th yeah. Kristen, thank you so much. You really pulled together so many nice passive fundraising events yeah. this year, more than ever before. We can't thank you enough because this was, I think as you know, you know, everyone knows that this year was a little bit um, was definitely slow in terms of fundraisers. We really didn't have as many big events as we normally do, like in, a, in an average year. So the passive fundraisers really helped a lot um, and yeah. you made them all happen. So thank you. Yeah, it's been amazing. I actually, you know what we, I forgot to put on here, Stephanie too, is Kristen's going to Washington schools having their tricky tray. Mm -hmm. And we have some of the, bra the Pure Vita bracelets left over still. So she, we, I, we got permission to sell them at the... Um, the leftovers at the tricky awesome. track. So she's going to be doing that for us. That's so, great. Yeah. I mean, she, Kristen, you did an amazing job. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, wait, so, so you said pliables is June, June 19th. 19th. It's 19th. on a Saturday, all day. Ah, that's amazing. Awesome. Yep. 
That's great. We, and I think, I feel like we tried to do that last year and we couldn't get yeah. it off the ground. And then I saw that another school recently, I saw that another school yes. did, had one, I think. Was it Playa maybe? Or I don't know. But anyway, we spent a lot, a lot of money there. So I'm happy to, to spend it on June 19th. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Okay. Um, right. HSA. Oh. Yeah, HSA yeah. committee positions update. Mary, you want to take that? All right, so I'm going to take that. All right, so this year for co-president, we had um, two sets of moms that put their, their names in. So we have Janine and Roberta, and we have Sally and Sharon. So because we're not in person to do a vote, we're going to do a good old pull out of a bag the name. So I have my assistant here. Come over here, Allie. Allie's here. Say hi. All right. I have... <laughs> Janine and Roberta on here. Okay. We have an empty bag. I'll hold the bag. <laughs> Gonna fold this one up. All right. Stick it in the bag. And then I have Sally and Sharon here. We're gonna fold this up. All right, shake it up good. Who will be the next? Co-vice, uh, co-presidents. All right, let's see. Pull it out. Yeah, let's see. Janine and Roberta. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> awesome. I think Gina's on. I think, are you here? Yeah. I think I are saw you, you on. I, I thought I saw you on. Are you on? Yeah. Jean, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Same. Okay. Nice. Thank you, so. thank yeah, you for volunteering. Yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate yeah, it. Ellie. Meredith and I will will try to share as much uh, information as we can um, between yeah. now and September um, no, to get you no. off on the right foot, um, so that you have everything you need to uh, to lead uh, the HSA next Great. year. Thank you. Yeah. 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 It's 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 nice. It's it's really it's so. That's everything but nice things to say about it. Um, Jeffrey is going to be staying on as a treasurer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have an incoming sixth grade mom, Terry Greenlee from Washington School. She's going to be our secretary. Oh, I know Terry. That's good. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we have our executive um, board in place for next year. We still have um, some committees to fill though. So we're still working on that. And I think Mr. Bertola, we can probably send you um, an updated flyer uh, to put out uh, so that we can, we can let everyone know what positions are still available for yeah. next year. Sounds good. We, we do have um, three people for the seventh grade vice presidents. Um, so I just, we have to, we've, we've never really had three Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, I, I guess we just have to talk about if we want to just continue to have the three that volunteered, it's, it would be a nice team, or if the one person should um, get a partner and then we pull a, we do a vote in this way, it's, it's something that I think we should just, we can discuss, Stephanie, figure it out. There it is. Three groups or three people? Three people. I think it's- Well, we have, we have a group it's of, a, a two that are, would are put their name in as partners and then one single. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we do have, we did have some interest in the book fair and passive fundraising for next year. Um, but the others are open. So we have, well, I'll send you that list. Okay. And we can send it out. All right. Okay, so another thing that we've been working on, um, so the HSA League has asked um, all of the HSA um, teams to work on updating uh, their bylaws. So we've been working, I say we, but I mean Meredith has been working very hard <laughs> to, uh, to update and revise uh, the bylaws. So it, we're not done, um, but we've been working on it. I, I think we... I don't know how many pages long it is, but I guess we could share some of the new language so far. And basically we've been taking recommended language from the league um, and adding it in where, um, into the current bylaws. Yeah. So I don't think there are any major changes, but basically um, we're adding some language for consistency across all of the HSAs. 
So wherever we highlight, oh, there's my notes. Wherever we highlight it yellow is some of the changes that we made just to, I, to, to I, you know, when looking at some of the recommendations, what the objectives of the associate, association are, what are our core values and what does it mean and, and how do we um, apply that to um, the HSA. So everything that's yellow is new stuff that we incorporated. I just have to, um, it's really bugging me, but the margins are all out of whack because I did a lot of cutting and pasting, so. <laughs> yeah, and it looked like it hadn't, even, been up, it, it hadn't yeah. been updated in a long time, right? Yeah, I think since 2012, I wanna say. Um, we even did add, Jen, there was the stuff that you had um, about virtual and if we were to do Zoom, what the pr protocol was. So we made sure that we added all of that in there as well. So as you can see, it's so really long. Uh, the only thing you guys just right there that jumped out is you need to determine what the number is for a quorum. Right. I, we got to put that in there. Okay. So, yeah. So this is still a work in progress. I think what we're aiming to do is to finalize this and to share it out um, before the next meeting. So everyone has a chance to read through it because it's a lot to ask to review this um, for Zoom when it's like nine pages or six pages long. So, so broad. We'll so just, you know, that, that part we were leaving open based on the size of the school and, um, you know, what you think would be appropriate. Like at Washington School, a quorum is 10. And we didn't want to say, you know, 10 at Lincoln, which would be a lot for them yeah. because they're probably half the Probably a lot for GCMS also. I mean, we've definitely seen our attendance increase um, over the past year with Zoom meetings, but yeah. hopefully that continues into next year. But I don't, but in the past, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what our average number of attendees is, including executive board. It's probably had been hovering around like 12, 13, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But in person, it was averaging four. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the existing um, bylaws did work good if for the middle school. The way they were worded, basically, all the business would could be conducted by the executive committee, which actually kind of works pretty good considering the small meeting size normally. Uh, I don't know if we really want to change that part of it. Something to think about. Okay. Very complicated the way it was written in the bylaws, I thought. It was kind of confusing, but it allowed you just to have the uh, presidents, the vice presidents, the treasurer, the secretary, candle business at meetings. You didn't need 10 people or whatever, which, you, you know, you never get Well, there's, there's two different kinds of both. And yes. actually what we're trying to avoid is that being able to happen. And it's probably more geared towards an elementary school where there might be 12 members of the executive board and then they can have, they can make decisions and handle business without the population even being aware of it. So that's, you know, there are certain decisions made in an executive meeting and then yeah, yeah. there are certain things that need to be. So that was why, you know, we, we wanted people to, to specify what a quorum is and then the language is in there that, Half of those quorum votes yes. need to be from just HSA members, not. Mm -hmm. So I, I totally see your point, Jeff, that at yeah. the middle school and at the high school level, it's yeah. difficult to even get a body in here. there to yeah. count. Yeah. Um, and that might be something that we can take to Shelly to discuss that maybe the middle school and the high school, the language might be slightly different than the elementary schools. That's not something that we thought about when we were going through these. Um, so, you know, you can mm -hmm. see where that's coming from that at a school like Wilson, where they have two presidents, four vice presidents, you know, secretaries, treasurers, a, a quorum of 10, it's like, whoa, whoa, there's like 12 executive board members. We don't want that. Um, so we'll take that offline and um, 
Yeah. Let's let's have a powwow. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Just, just one more thing to mention that when you do a lot of times you have to be a member of the HSA or a dues paying member. It, so that. So, yep. so someone has to keep track of that then. That's all. Through. That's all in there. Is that yeah. you know that the president really and the done. secretary need to start yeah. having a list at every meeting of who's paying. I know, but you know that's never been done. I know. And you yeah. know what else? There's there's people who are executive board members who don't pay. Um, yeah. And, you know, as the HSA League, we're not looking to be the police. This yeah. is just a reminder. Yeah. And in some cases, some of these rules have been so long gone yeah. Yeah. that people are like, wait, what? So... Yeah, it's yeah. just kind of, uh, you know, let's all refresh ourselves on the, the actual... Well, let's be realistic, though. We have to be realistic, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't require a quorum of 10, and there's four people there always. Right. Like I said, for middle school and high school, maybe that's something we need to revisit. Yeah. So yes. this is a work in progress. We'll get this done and then send it out for people to review. All right. So that kind of leads into, I wanted to give a quick update because I did attend the HSA League meeting uh, last week um, on the 18th. So I just wanted to share some updates from that meeting. Um, just a couple of the topics. Um, one of the things that was discussed at the meeting was the potential for a district-wide um, HSA League level fundraiser next year. Um, so it hasn't been finalized yet, but there was discussion about um, a color run. Um, so this would be a fundraiser um, where the, the money raised would be shared across all of the schools in the district. So it's not fundraising for one particular school. Um, so there's also conversation, um, and I think this has come up before too, about um, focused fundraising. So, you know, identifying a specific goal. So there was discussion about um, the HSA presidents working together with the school principals to come up with a wish list. So something that um, this, this, the funds raised from this type of event, like how could it be used um, for each school? So what, what, what are the needs of each individual school? Um, it kind of different from the fundraising goals we set um, at the beginning of the year within our own HS, HSA at GCMS. Um, so that was discussed at the meeting. Something to plan for uh, for next year. Um, there was also talk about, and I, I didn't know what the schedule was, but I know that they had identified like rotations for the elementary schools, like which schools would be having their big fundraisers next year. So it's usually two per year. So I guess if Washington is having their tricky trade this year, then I think they're probably not um, on for fall next year. I don't know, it's, Jen, if you remember what the uh, is. Lincoln, mm -hmm. Lincoln, Jefferson, and then the following year would be Wilson, Washington. Okay. Yeah. So then, so those schools are now working to plan for, for next year's um, big fundraisers. So at GCMS, we don't have the same level of fundraising where we have a big event each year, like this, like the, the elementary schools do. Um, but just to be aware that those are happening next year. And usually I'm not sure. I think, I mean, some of them pick fall, some pick spring um, and they're working out the details now. Also that the league um, will have a Google calendar for tracking district wide uh, passive fundraising events and you know, just basically any kind of events just to have a shared calendar. Um, I know that this has come up in the past. So it's, you know, it's difficult when schools work really hard to put together fundraisers only to find out that like they're conflicting dates with other schools where they're having fundraisers on the same weekend or, or close to the same date. Um, so this calendar will be created and then it's up to the schools to, you know, to, to put their events on the calendar. And it's a great place to, to cross check um, if you're in the planning stages to see who's running what when to try to be conscious of um, not stepping on the toes of other schools because every, you know, everyone um, puts a lot of time and energy into fundraising and um, we want to be conscious of that. So that a calendar will exist. Um, there's also mention um, that the HSA League would be willing to share um, our, our flyers, school flyers, you know, for any of the events that are happening at any of the schools that they'd be happy to cross post uh, on any of the social media pages. So, 
you know, for example, if we're having this, uh, I mean, Panera is tomorrow for us, but I think there's probably still time if we wanted to share the pliables fundraiser coming up on June 19th. So the league would be happy um, to share our flyers and advertise that on their pages as well. Um, so we can do that. Uh, and then there was a lot of talk about best practices um, for HSA um, kind of ways of working, right? So one of them, um, it was presented best meeting practices. I think it was Jefferson School who presented um, like the way they run their meetings, which was really interesting. Some of the things they do, we're doing. Other things um, we can learn from and we should incorporate, I think. Um, one thing that they're doing, and I think I noticed tonight, uh, I can see that we're recording the meeting. But not only did they record the meeting, they will share the link, I think, so that anyone who missed the meeting, they post it so that, you know, if you couldn't make the HSA meeting, you can, you know, re you can watch it um, when you have free time. Um, the habit of um, recording attendees, so we've been doing that by collecting names in the chat, and then we're including that in our meeting minutes, um, so that's a good practice. Uh, sending agendas ahead of the meeting along with financials and meeting minutes before the meeting. So when the link goes out uh, for the for the meeting, and I think they said they do it like the day before or the weekend before or something, uh, that way it gives people a chance to review the agenda. That way if you're on the agenda, it's a good reminder uh, that you should attend the meeting, um, but also to have a look at like the treasurer's report and um, the minutes before the actual meeting. Um, so that's something that we can um, start to incorporate going forward as a best practice. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting is that they set ground rules. So they established uh, ground rules and lay them out at the beginning. I don't know if they lay it out at the beginning of each year or if they lay it out at the beginning of each meeting. Um, but I think, you know, an example would be that, you know, um, you know, everyone has a voice for, you know, we're here. If you have something to say, we respect each other's opinions, um, but that the topics discussed here should be related to HSA. So from time to time, um, there are topics that come up that really have no, that are really not, don't pertain to HSA business in any way. So that's something to be conscious of. Um, but we can talk, we can think of um, our own type of ground rules that we want to introduce uh, to set the tone in each meeting so that everyone feels welcome and heard at meetings. Um, and also that the meeting minutes, they post them um, after the meeting. So I know that we share them and we review them at the, the previous meeting minutes um, at the top of each meeting, but um, their meetings are posted, um, I think you mentioned to the Board of Ed website or, or to their own school website. Um, and I think they may have mentioned also that they email them out to the school with a link. Um, so that if anyone missed the meeting, um, the meeting minutes are shared very soon after the meeting happens so that everybody can stay on the same page. Just because you missed the meeting doesn't mean that you miss um, what was discussed. Um, so those are um, some, some nice um, best practices and ways of working that we can start to incorporate at GCMS as well. Um, and I think that's pretty much um, and I think it was just a mention that, you know, the bylaws that we're working on, all of the schools are working on um, reviewing, updating and reviewing their bylaws for next year. So I think that's, that's all I have there. Um, I think that brings us to the eighth grade event update. So I know um, Teresa couldn't make it tonight. So Jen, it's all you if you want to let us know where we're at, what's coming. Yes. Okay. And just Chris is swimming in a swim meet. So if his event comes up while I'm talking, I'll give you guys a warning, but I'll need no, like sure. two okay. minutes. Um, okay, so pool party is the 24th. Mr. Bertolo confirmed that. Um, Christina Canonico, thank God for her. She has a DJ for us. And um, he, we already reached out to him when Mr. Bertolo got, um, got us a little extra time at the pool party, the DJ is, more than happy to stay. So we have a contract with him. Um, she spoke to Jersey Mike's. We originally got the pricing on the box lunches. And then at the last meeting, I think we talked about maybe exploring the boxed subs instead. And then having pizza also, um, since we do have a parent who volunteered to not give us the pizza, but give us a great price on pizza. So the boxed subs from Jersey Mike's, if you've never seen them, it's literally a box. And it's got cut up pieces of subs that are individually wrapped. Um, it's each box serves 12. They normally cost $75 a box and Jersey Mike's will give them to us for $50 a box. So 
we, you know, don't have a cost figured out yet for food for the party because we're waiting on these RSVPs and then we need to kind of collectively figure out how much pizza and subs do we think we need. Um, so that's still to be determined. Um, so that I think is it. We, we still do, I think, want to try and reach out either to Sip and Swirl, Kona Ice and Ice Cream Truck, but we want to get a feel of where we are financially with pizza and subs and all that stuff. So um, we did the lawn signs. We sold 142 lawn signs, which was great. Wow. They should be done within the next day or two. So something we need to discuss is how we're going to distribute those. Um, mm. But first, let's just rewind. We sold 142 lawn signs. They are normally $10 a piece. And the printer, since we were ordering so much from him, and we did go over those 100 signs, they're going to be $9 a piece. And we are going to take that extra money and make a donation to the Jim Brown Scholarship Foundation. Um, so That's awesome. That's we'll great. probably be able to donate $150. Um, and we thought that that was a fitting, you know, something fitting for our eighth graders to do. Um, since, you know, they, here comes Chris, you guys. Can no, you no, talk go. amongst yourself for two no. minutes? Go, go, go. Go, oh, yeah. right back. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, so that's cool. I, that was that's great. I know that we didn't know what to expect in terms of- Why don't you guys of... talk about how we can distribute lawn signs? And Mr. Bertolo, you can give an update on eighth grade t-shirts and how many kids still haven't picked them up. <laughs> A lot. There's actually not, not too many left. Um, oh. I checked on, today's what? Wednesday? Tuesday? I guess I Tuesday. checked on Friday and there were only like four four or five shirts left in the office. Oh, all right. Most That's of the good. kids who ordered them have picked them up, but okay. they're, they're awesome. Yeah. They're so cool. They came out really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just be careful how you wash them because I threw mine in with something light and, and, and I have like, we now have other things that are sort of tie-dyed. <laughs> that was my mistake. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> that is tremendous advice. Yeah. Um, I'm so happy, Mr. Patola, that there's only a few of them. That being said, um, the pickup was crazy. It was total chaos. And Teresa and I are trying to figure out a way to make the sign pickup mm. not so chaotic. And we're also thinking that maybe it's not a great idea for the kids to pick them up themselves and to be walking along Bloomfield Avenue with spiked mm. metal pieces. No. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if we should do like, like we should set Can I make up a suggestion? sign spots. Yeah. I, I ran the senior signs last year, the lawn signs, mm -hmm. the COVID, you know, we had to have social distance. So literally I had them all on my front lawn and we had the order for like their names, who they belong to, if they weren't personalized on the back. And then P they were told like they would be out on the lawn between this time and this time. And parents literally drove up, they got their sign, they got in their car, and they left. So that was something that we were talking about. I am making labels. If you saw when your child brought their shirt home, there was like a mail merge label on the tag. I was very proud of myself that I figured out how to do mail merge from an Excel spreadsheet. So I was going to do the same thing for the signs because in addition to there being several kids who don't have their names on their lawn signs, there's also four Jacks, seven Chris's, you know, three Avery's. So we um, were going to do that. We weren't sure if we were going to insert all of the metal spikes ourselves. We did that for the fifth grade lawn signs at Washington School, or if we were going to arrange a pickup where the parent takes their cardboard, their, you know, corrugated sign and their metal thing when they pick it up. Because we did think about, um, hold on. Sorry, uh, he's done. Um, we did think about, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought, you guys. Uh, Sorry. I get metal. very into it when he's swimming. The lawn metal signs, the metal pieces. Oh, so we weren't sure about leaving them out and the wrong signs disappearing mm -hmm. and not having it be kind of supervised. Jean, you didn't have any problems with that? With people coming and saying, my sign is gone. Oh, 
we had, I didn't have one problem. And half the time, I like sat on my front porch. So I like, I kind of kept tabs and we made it like a certain time. And I would have to say, oh, I can't come by till after work at eight o'clock. And I would leave those out. And at night, yeah. whatever left, I brought and put on my front porch. And then the next morning, whatever our time was, I made my kids go out and we stuck them out in the lawn. So I had like a hundred signs on my front yard. Yeah. So we were talking about, you know, Friday, there's no school. Then right. maybe, maybe midday Friday, she and I could set up at the school. Um, we, we won't be able to confirm that day until we know we're getting the signs and have the time to, to label them all. Um, so that would be probably like a tomorrow afternoon or Thursday morning decision, Mr. Bertolo, if you push that information out, but then it's the holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. you, might so, get um, you could do it one day after school if we left a gap, like not do it right at 1230. If you right. did like a two o'clock pickup, it could, then it could be like any day after school. Yeah. That might give yes. you guys a little bit of time too. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's our other option. And, and obviously if, um, if we don't have them to start handing out on, even if we start handing out on a Friday, we're going to need a second day. Mm -hmm. um, so whether we start on Friday or we just do two days next week, you know, that's two to three o'clock kind of thing. You know, the elementary school starts going full day next week. So if we give people that two o'clock pickup, it's, you know, a lot of us have kids in all the different school levels. So it gives the middle school a chance to clear out and then maybe parents are out on their way to pick up their elementary school kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we thought about sticking them in the lawn at the school, but then again, do we have any kids <laughs> that might, I don't know, mess with the signs. I don't know. And, and I'm not accusing anyone's kid of messing with signs, but we did have a fifth grade incident with the Washington school signs. Mm -hmm. Not when they were at the school, but on someone's lawn. And you think like, no one's going to do that, but I just saw it happen. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that they, I don't know, get to where they belong. Yeah. So, um, do you guys have any feelings either way about them not being on the metal piece? And when parents pick them up going here, here you go, here's your cardboard, here's your metal piece. The only thing when they are standing up on the lawn, it's easier to see them versus when you have them in a pile. Well, I was gonna alphabetize them when okay. I put the stickers on them. Then that works. <laughs> um, that, that's kind of what we were thinking. It's a lot of work to get those metal spikes in those signs. The company the high school used, they came on it. <gasps> come on. Really? Uh, they literally got, there... delivered, they got delivered to my house, ready to go on my porch, and we just stuck them in the lawn. So uh, we're we're, we're not that. using that company. <laughs> 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 we, we didn't use that company. Um, we used a Washington school parent and he's been very wonderful to us, which on to the next thing, our banner, we're also getting from him. Um, Mr. Bertolo, I know you worked very closely with Teresa answering all her questions and um, that banner is ordered. It will be 20 by six. And uh, that leads us to the question of, you know, that sign is being purchased with the intent of it being used year after year after year. Mm -hmm. So is that going to come out of our budget or can we share the cost with the HSA? Since the sign is not saying class of 2021, it's saying congratulations graduates or congratulations eighth graders or something like that. How much is it, Jen? It is $265. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think if it's something that can be, it's multi-purpose, right? It can be repurposed, yeah. you know, for at least a few years. Hopefully, we could, you know, mm -hmm. it stays in good shape and it's stored somewhere and no one loses track of it. Then I think it doesn't, I don't think it should come completely out of this eighth grade um, eighth budget. Mm -hmm. So I guess we have to take a look to see where it makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a place at the school where stuff is stored? HSA stuff. I mean, I know that Washington had a spot. Does GCMS have that? I, don't I mean, I can't think of anything we, we have that. Right. I mean, there were a bunch. There's a bunch of binders, and there's some place, uh, but I can't imagine what else there would be. 
And you don't want to lose it, you know, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard to find things otherwise. Yeah. And maybe a space could be assigned by Mr. Bartolo, you know, in the basement or something. Mm -hmm. Wherever yeah. it is, I'll remember. I'm I'm usually pretty good with. Okay. with once I know where it is, I'm pretty good at remembering where remember. where that stuff is. I'm usually the person in my house that finds everything. Like, remember a year ago we had? Yep, I know right where it is. So, <laughs> we'll say. <laughs> All right, so we just have to figure okay, out well, where it would come from. Why don't we take, do you want to shift to um, review the budget and the treasurer's yeah. report and then maybe in the process of doing that we can look to see where we might have some money that could cover? Yeah, that sounds good. Fine. Mute it. Jeffrey, you're muted. I don't know if I can unmute him. No, I won't let me. Jeffrey, we can't hear you. I'm sorry about that. I didn't realize. I'm sorry. Um, okay. <laughs> the license, um, the regular checking account is $26,468.95. There was a large deposit for eighth grade t shirts, which, which I'm sure, assuming soon we'll have a, uh, an invoice to pay for them. Um, there was $20 for membership deposit. There were some transfers, which Stephanie mentioned, to move money into faculty appreciation for that breakfast. Um, so then the savings account, which is the gaming gaming account, um, that has two thousand six hundred and ninety eight dollars and nine cents, and there were no no um, transactions in that account. Um, anyone have any questions? Uh, can I see a motion to accept the treasurer's report? I can't see anything. Okay. A yeah, second? no, I got it. I see it. It's Jen, yeah, we saw Yep. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Let's look to see where we can get it from. Okay, so we did, so I think, I think what we're seeing is that we used a portion, well, we used miscellaneous, to cover yep. supplement teacher appreciation, right? Breakfast. Yes. And then a portion from Sunshine. Oh, a por yeah, a, por a portion was used from Sunshine as well. Mm -hmm. So, if you didn't use anything, I would say school gift. Yeah. Yeah, what do we have there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that too. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. So if you want to do that, I mean, somebody should make a motion to mm -hmm. um, something along the lines as using um, school gift money to pay for, you know, what is it, $255 to pay for this sign, just so we do a vote and document it. Yep. All right. So we're making a motion to use a por some of the money from school gift to pur uh, purchase the sign. That would be 255, Jen? I think it's 265. 265. 265. Yeah, okay. It's a school gift. Yeah, 265, sorry. Okay. How much it cost? So then we should, like, well, normally you'd have a vote with a show of we hands. I don't know if anybody could see everyone's hands on this or not. I can't. We can put in the chat if you just put, you know, yes. Yes, yes, or, yes. or no. Yes, yes or no. Or no. Mm -hmm. Okay. And somebody should just keep track of make sure, you know, if that's more than fifty percent.
I mean, this, this is the part where ideally you would know if people were paid their dues and were voting members and all that stuff here. Seven yeses. Yeah. Okay. How many people are online? A 12? Wow. Okay, wow. so it's more than six. Eight, nine. Yeah. I mean, I, I would just write down in the minutes, if you have nine there, I would say nine yays. And three abstains, I guess. Do I count as a vote? Because obviously I would vote yes too, but I don't know if I'm, <laughs> if I'm one of the one of the participants. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. Okay, so that passed. Right? Yep. Thank you. We thought it would. It was a nice idea to not put the gear on it and then have it for, you know, future graduates to use and they can personalize it in their own way, whether it's with balloons or, you know, the lawn stakes in front of it with the gear. Um, and that it would just be something nice for the school to, to display every year. Mm -hmm. So Shen, was this paid for yet or not? No, this is, this order is, ju we just approved the design, the order's going oh, okay. in. Um, I think Teresa, uh, no, Teresa has the invoice. She emailed it. So we have okay. to fill out a form, get it to Meredith or Stephanie to sign, and then. Yeah, yeah, okay. We're going to yeah. have a few coming to you. Sorry. Sure. <laughs> okay. Then I think for eighth grade, that's it. Um, Mr. Bertolo, we need uh, those RSVPs. So yep. it's it's been so long now that people are like, did I respond and they don't remember? And I don't know. If that's, I have to like cipher through some of it because it gives you the opportunity to, to submit. To delete duplicates. One. Yeah. yeah. So I would say right now we're definitely over 100. I think last time I told you we were in like the 60s. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. It's definitely over 100 now. I have okay. 175 responses. I just have to go through and figure out who's, How many who's duplicates. been a duplicate since the last time I cleaned it up. So and once, are you getting any, guys, are you getting no's or are people, if they choose to RSVP, it to yes? Some people have responded no through the, okay. through the form. Yeah. Okay. Not many though. Most of the replies have been yes. So when is our June meeting? It's like the day before graduation, I think, right? It's like June 22nd. Oh, I think it's late. Okay. It's really late. That's way too close to the party to be making food decisions. So then... Can we just kind of collectively, what does everybody think in terms of food ordering? Um, you know, should we calculate one piece of sandwich and one slice of pizza for each kid? And then some are gonna eat two pizzas and some are gonna eat two subs and some are gonna only eat one or the other and, or none. We just wanna have enough food and it's kind of hard to figure out what that balance is. Mm. And uh, you don't want me, my half Italian side doing the ordering because we will have way too much food and we will waste a lot of money. So, um, you know, what does everybody think in terms of reasonable quantities? I mean, I think, I think your, your estimate there, like one piece of sandwich, one slice of pizza. And then I think even with the RSVPs, like, there could be kids who don't show up the day of. I don't know if we let kids in who didn't RSVP. Like, I don't know how that works, but maybe you take the final total and add like 10 and then. All right. So like if we have, a, if we have 120 kids, you would feel I like get like 12 pizzas and 10 boxes of subs. And yeah. yeah, I think so. All right. I think it makes sense because if they don't have two, you know, a sub and a piece of pizza, they're gonna have two pieces of pizza and there'll be another sub left over. You know what I mean? And they're some kids aren't gonna, gonna eat anything. Exactly. Yeah, I'm thinking you know? the same thing. Yep. Yeah. So it'll okay. balance out, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do that and then um, we'll try and get some kind of dessert truck mm -hmm. happening. Um, we'll call gelatis, I guess, sip and swirl, uh, town scoop does pre-packaged, like, you know, good humor man. Um, Which I think we said last time may be quicker. 
Like if you, you have what? the, if, like quicker, like they, instead of them, oh, like, yeah, wait, we did you know say that. Mean? Yeah. yeah. Instead of them scooping mm-hmm. ice cream, they can just go and get the prepackaged. Mm-hmm. Prepackaged. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So we'll focus on town scoop. Mm-hmm. We did say that. I feel like I've seen a lot. It's like, I think they do that for the, um, what do you call it? At the Grover Cleveland house, 4th of July. I feel like they come with prepackaged now too. Like, oh, like the cops? Oh. Yeah, the cups, they, you know, they have like, I don't know, like five or six flavors, but they're pre-packed. So so I think they can do it too, like in a different way where they have like sorbet or ice cream or whatever. Um, Actually, yes, Jean, you're still here. Isn't that what they did for Lincoln Ice Cream Day? Yes, they did at at one point, yes. Like the little Dixie cups, but it's- Yeah, they were little cups. Like it Mm -hmm. must be like their junior size. Mm -hmm. Just, and there was a few flavors and that, you know, the kids didn't really, you know, it was like chocolate, whatever, Italian ice. There were a few. Okay. Okay. Then um, that's the route we'll try and go. And um, the only other thing that we were talking about having at the pool party and maybe promotion, I don't remember, this is Teresa's thing, was the step and repeat. And Mr. Bertolo, she's having a really hard time with that image from your tie. Do you not have a PDF of like a full sheet of that? I can look for it and see. They were, I probably got it when we, when we had the tie made. So I could go through some of the old emails and see if I had. Because with the the image that she has and and repeating it that many times, it actually looks like an optical illusion. Okay. And it's very like dizzying. (laughs) So... Um, that was the other thing. I think that covers all the plans that we had for that money that we fundraised. So if anybody else has any suggestions or any fun ideas of things that we can, you know, include in that day without Mm -hmm. Gabe getting mad at us at the rec. (laughs) He's already mad at us. (laughs) No. (laughs) There's, there's no... You know, Gabe's Gabe. That's what I'll say. <laughs> but we got our pool party date back. Those yeah. of you that were not aware, there was a mm, there was a close call. I was on a fifth grade promotion meeting, and they started talking about the pool party on the twenty fourth, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all like, "What's the problem?" And I'm like, "The problem is I have a DJ booked. That's the eighth grade pool party, and mm. all of the fifth grade." All the, I'm sorry, all the elementary principals, the board of ed, everybody had received these communications about the fifth grade pool party on June 24th after we had already made all our plans. And Mr. Bertolo had emails confirming the date, extending the time. So Mr. Bertolo was our hero. (laughs) (laughs) I just, I cleaned up the spreadsheet a little bit. I might've missed one or two, but it looks like there's 145 yeses right now. And how many no's? Five. So uh, oh. we've got 150. So, uh, 150 replies, and I'm going to guess most of the ones who haven't replied are probably just no's, but I'm going to send out one more. I think we said, what was the deadline? The 4th? June 4th? 7th. June 7th? June 7th. 7th. So I'll send, I'll send another blast <laughs> Thursday, and then I'll send another one like okay. the end of next week. If we get okay. 150 kids, I would yeah, be good. happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would I would think that's a pretty good attendance. You know, every grade is every class is different, and for this class, I think that would be tremendous. So, <laughs> how many kids uh, are in the grade? Two thirty-seven. Like yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the class is huge. Yeah. It's huge. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Enormous. Thank God they'll be raising the uh, restrictions outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's what Mr. Devlin and I have been going back and forth about. We we went to the high school field last week with a long tape measure and was trying to figure out, like, logistically, how many spectators could we have if they had to have some kind of distance between them. And we had kind of said we thought we'd be able to get each family four tickets each, um, the two on the field next to the student and nice. then two other ones in the stands. But now if, if this gets passed or the, whatever they're saying um, – you know, I don't think there's going to be a limit on the number of people we can have in. 
And I think on the field, we would probably just go back to having students and have everybody mm -hmm. into the mm -hmm. bleachers. I think we'll have more than enough room. We'll see, fingers crossed that this actually goes through. <laughs> what is our rain date? So our first date is the 23rd at 12 noon. noon. If it rains, like if it's drizzling and we have to push it back a little bit, I think the latest we could go is 2 or 2.30 on that day in order for the high school to still get theirs at night. Okay. And the rest of it is all dependent on the high school. So if, if they're able to have it on the 23rd at night, but we're not able to have it in the afternoon, then it gets bumped to the 24th. At what time? Well, that's what we'd have to figure out. If, if everything is arranged for the pool party, we basically have free range of any time we want to do it because the high schools would be done. Mm. If the 23rd gets completely washed out, then that's where we might have a problem. Because I think we would have to be an afternoon and the high school would probably take the night shift again. Unless we tried to really delay it until the Friday, but I don't know if that's... Or we did it in the morning. Could we, like, could we do it in the morning on the 24th? Yeah. Like a 9 a.m. Well, the only problem is that's a school day. Yeah. And that, that would be parking, our day. Yeah. Parking becomes a huge issue. Oh, yeah. uh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless you can convince Mr. Devlin to make the 24th a virtual day as well. Yeah. Well, they're going to have kids in the day after, after graduation? No, the 24th. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right now, the high yeah, school. Yeah, that's, that's a half day of school. So the 24th, they would have kids in. I mean, all the Ooh. underclassmen, they have, if that's uh, a cohorted day, whatever, you know, yeah. whoever's supposed to be in that day. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Hmm. I'll have to talk like, to I mean, them about that tomorrow. Let's be real. Know. What are they doing? They're not doing right. anything. Right. I'll Especially, talk to them about that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Just well, so we know all our options. I, I was talking to him about um, if he gets rained out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he said, like, I don't think that's going to happen. If it does, I'm going to be furious, but... Like we were saying what happens to his graduation then on Friday and he was saying that they would probably try to do an indoor one and stream it somehow. Like maybe do students only or figure out if you mm -hmm. can get like one or two tickets in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have an indoor plan because I don't know if we have the space or the availability to do it. So that's something that I'm kind of in my head thinking what if kind of scenario so because mm. I don't know I don't know what the high school is thinking um like we had talked about maybe doing it in the CPA with just the kids and having them spaced out in the seats because mm. there's enough room like if if it's indoors there has to be some kind of distance you can't have them all mm. I don't know if you've ever mm. seen an indoor graduation at the high school where there's 210 chairs squeezed on that stage like you're you're on top of each other there's no social distancing there and I don't know if the gym is big enough to, to space out and have spectators. I'm not sure. I've, I've only done indoor graduations in an auditorium, never in a gym. So I don't know what that would look like, but it's on my radar just in case something goes wrong on that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but I hope not. Um, okay. And then the thing that we forgot to talk about was balloons. Hmm. Mm. decorating for promotion we we did talk about wanting some kind of or something, right? arch mm -hmm. um do we know how big i don't that think is? mr devlin was in favor of the arch on the stage but i think we had kind of talked about when we did it indoors at caldwell university a couple of years ago we just had like sta i don't know if they're towers they're, the pillars yeah the, the, yeah um he was okay, okay with those so if we want to do something like that for both the middle and high school like just have them up throughout the day that would that would be okay okay so we're looking at two balloon pillars mm -hmm. okay all right i don't know you know we're using yeah if there it's it's really just more for decoration if you know mm -hmm. if the funding's not there i don't think anyone will will miss them okay all right, well, now that we have
an idea we you know let's say we have at least 150 kids coming to the pool party we can start mm -hmm. to work out some of those numbers and yeah. have a final head count i guess in a week week and a half yeah, yeah. that's good and i think and what are we what kind of help do you need from the seventh grade um parents the uh for, for, for promotion. So I know like in the past, did it been, like what role do they play with? So they usually handle the hospitality table. Okay. So, how's that so how will that work at the high school? I guess Mr. Bertolo, like will there be like, I think we talked about selling water maybe at the last meeting or. Yeah, I was, I was nervous about the ticketing aspect of it, if we needed to do that, if that would be too much going on by the gate, like trying to mm -hmm. scan people in and do water and all that. But if it's general admission and people can just come in, I don't think it's a problem if you set up a couple tables right by the entrance and sell bottles of water right there. I don't think that's a problem. So do we want to leave that to the seventh grade parents and that can be their first fundraiser for their eighth grade dance next year. Yeah. And just stay mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that's, sure, why not? Yeah. Who are those seventh grade parents, do we know? Yeah, it's Carla Brown and her partner, that I, and I can't remember who it is, right, Mary? Um, that? It's Carla and, yes, oh. let me look. I, I know Carla, I'll, I'll reach out to yeah. Carla, that's fine. Yeah. I think though, I think that I don't know in the past, like, did they stay through promotion? Because if they, I mean, they need to be aware of like our date and possible rain date and times just so that they can arrange, right. I don't know if they're planning to be at a promotion ceremony for a couple of hours selling water. I don't know. but so Right. We well, Carla's a teacher, so yeah, I, I know it'll be a problem yep. for her, but exactly. maybe they can find some other parents. It'd be a great way for them to start mm -hmm. building their, their funds for next year. Mm -hmm. Um, especially Lipka. since we, I hope, can assume they're going to actually a, have a dance. A real dance, I know. And, um, you know, they'll need the money. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. at markup on water, it's crazy. They sell, you know, they sell them for a dollar a yeah. bottle. They're going to be rolling in it yeah. to start off with. So, they I'm sure they'd be able to find some it. parents. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Stephanie, it's um, Carla and Erica lift us. Oh, okay. 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 So then I'll reach out to them about water sales. Okay. Thanks. Um, cool. Okay. All right. Wow. It's coming up. Really? It's, it's coming fast. Yeah. Four weeks. Okay. Does anyone, I, I don't know. I don't think we took questions from Mr. Bertolo. Does anyone have questions about anything? I started my speech for that night about 25 times already. Stop, mm -hmm. started again. Like I'm more stressed about the speech than, <laughs> than any, anything else that's going on in the next few weeks. So I'm like, hopefully this weekend it's quiet. I can just like sit by the pool and get something started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, I'll be crying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, should there be tissue sales? No. Um, remember at Washington, Jen, we did the tissues. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I mean, we can see we can see what our funds look like, but um, we are doing that at Washington again oh. this year. Uh, you know, a little package of tissues, and it had mm -hmm. a little poem mm -hmm. on it. You know, as your child, I don't remember what the wording was, but it was basically like, "Here, parents, we got your back." You know, <laughs> when you start crying, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. I didn't cry at eighth grade last time. Aisha, I don't think you did either, <laughs> right? I did not cry. <laughs> we were like eighth grade is more like woo, high five. Yes. Fifth grade is woo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I I found eighth grade to just be exciting last time. Mm -hmm. That you know. It was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And we'll have a beautiful day and we'll, we'll make it nice. Uh, you start saying that from your mouth. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of promotions and graduations happening those last two weeks of school that are really dependent on the weather. Yes. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> it's going to okay. be a long... <laughs> hmm? Yep. 
<laughs> Long 10 days to get through in Caldwell, yeah. West Caldwell. Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any other questions? Nope. All right. Mr. Okay. Bertolo, oh. Teresa and I will be in touch about our lawn signs. Eighth grade parents, keep your eyes peeled for information about lawn signs. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need help, let us know. Yeah, let us know. We'll, you know, I'll help you. We can help you hand them out or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we were thinking some of them like grab your friend's signs and tell them they're yeah. at the house, you know? Yeah. yeah. Kind of divide and conquer that way too. Yeah. Um, but they came out, uh, I think they came out really nice. The printer was probably by the end of it, ready to kill <laughs> both of us. Um, but we wanted to make sure that they looked really great. Mr. Bertolo, I know you saw a preview. You are not allowed to share it. I did not. <laughs> it was hard, but I did not. <laughs> nope. No sharing. And, uh, you know, by the end of this week or the beginning of next week, you guys will see, we'll see them. Okay. All right. If anybody okay. thinks of anything super fun, we should include that last week of school. Just reach out to me or Teresa. Thank you guys for all your work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a team effort, right? We get a lot of ideas on these meetings. So thank you everybody for sharing your input. Nice. Right. Well, okay. that's, that's it. That's our right. meeting. Meeting adjourned. All right, guys. All right. Have a nice Memorial Day. Yes, have a good one. Yes, you too. Okay. Bye.